You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramah Bet Shemesh Israel 5782, 2022. This week in Chutzla Eretz is Parsha Bechu and in Eretz Israel it's Parsha Bamidbar. I'd like to share with you a uh, Medrash at the end of Bechu Kosai, a Medrash at the beginning of Bamidbar, and discuss with you an idea, a thought I've been speaking about already this week in the Bitochen podcast, but I'd like to continue talking about this idea concept that I'd like to speak about is Hashkacha Pratis, God's divine providence, specifically in terms of His guidance and showing us, looking for, trying to understand what is it that Hashem would like us to do? Where, where, does it, where is it that Hashem wants us to go? We can determine this. We can figure it out. For example, Kodesh Baruch gives us certain talents, certain abilities, certain things that we're good at and certain things that we're not so good at. That's a sign. It's a sign of where we're supposed to go, where we're supposed to head. Things that we're passionate about are the things that we're supposed to do. It doesn't take away our obligation from doing things that are hard, of course. A person has a hard time learning Gemara, let's say. Still got to learn. But there are certain things that we'll find ourselves more drawn to. Those are signs from heaven that what we're, of what we're supposed to do. But I'd like to share with you the Medjish here. Arbo Paschal Bin Adarm, at the end of Parshish Bechul Kosei, we have the concept of Erechin, a person gives a certain amount of money based on his value. Obviously, not the value of a human being is inestimable. But the Torah gives us a certain idea as far as what value looks like in this context. And so there are Nadarim, a person can, can promise that he's going to give a certain thing, a certain amount, to the Beis Hamikdash, to the Temple, to the Mishkan. Arba Paschim and Nadarim says the Medrash, a very interesting idea. That there were four people who wanted to give something to. Uh, there were four people. Let's let's say it differently. There were four people who asked Hakadosh Baruch Hu for a certain thing, a specific thing. They said something which was open to Hakadosh Baruch Hu responding and having Hashkacha Prat and and Hashem showing his Hashkacha Pratis in that particular circumstance. So there were four people like this. We're going to enumerate them shortly. There were three people who asked appropriately. I'm sorry, they asked inappropriately. They, they made a request which wasn't really so good, as we'll see. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu, however, gave them a good response. One of, the, one of these four people that we're going to enumerate made a made a request which was not correct, not the, the right type of request, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave him a response that wasn't, wasn't so good. Ve'elohein. Now these are pretty famous. The first one is the most famous. Eliezer, Ebed, Abraham. Excuse me. The four of them are Eliezer, the servant of Abraham, Vishol, King Saul, Yiftach, and Jephthah, or something like that in English, Yiftach, the Kalev, and Caleb. Eliezer Shal Shalekah Hagen. Eliezer made a request which was wrong. What was the request that he made which was wrong? As follows. And we all know the story. It's a prime example. Of someone, so to speak, making a deal with Hashem and saying, This is what I want. Please, Hashem. If it's the right girl, so then let her respond to my request with, here, have some, have a drink, etc. And also, she ends up giving to all of the camels, right? So, it, was a, it wasn't it was such a good idea to make this request, because, It wasn't such a good request, because let's say the person who comes out is a maidservant, or a not from the family, a non-Jew, not from the family of Avram Avinu, or a, a harlot, a Zayna. Would you say that that's the right person for Yitzchak? But nevertheless, HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought about that Rebecca would be the one, indeed, from Avram's family, indeed, a tzaddik, a righteous individual. Okay, so even though he asked something which could have created a problem, Still, Hakadosh Baruch Hu responded in a good way. Kalev also made a similar request, 
which was not a good, not such a good idea. Shemar vayemer kolev asher yakes kira sefer. Kolev says his verses in Joshua and Yoshua perik tesvav pasuk tezayin. Kolev says, whoever is able to conquer the city of Kiryat Sefer, l'chadav and asati lois achsa biti liisha. I will reward that person with uh, my daughter's hand, my daughter achsa, her hand in marriage. So Hashem says, look, if it's going to be somebody who is a slave or a non-Jew or a mamzer, somebody who's the result of an illegitimate relationship, you're going to give your daughter to marry that person? Nevertheless, Kedosh Baruch did him a favor. The person who was able to do it was a big tzaddik, Asniel ben Kenaz, it was his brother. Right? Uh, an uncle is allowed to marry in Halacha, his niece. So, it was Asniel ben Kenaz, it worked out okay. Even though the request wasn't such a good idea. Shaul, Shaul, Shalaika Hagen. King Saul also made such a request. King Saul said, whoever will strike Goliath, Goliath, so I'll give my daughter to that person. I'll make him rich. If someone inappropriate would do it, you're going to give your daughter. So nevertheless, Hakadosh Baruch Hu made it that the person who would be able to defeat Goliath was indeed King David, the future King David, and. David married Shaul's daughter Michal. So those are the three circumstances where a person asks for something you shouldn't have asked for, and uh, it worked out. It worked out okay. Yiftach Shaul Shalikahim. The fourth example is somebody who it didn't work out so good for. Yiftach said, Shanamar, and this has more to do with our topic, which is the, the topic of making a nether, right? Each of these cases, a person is saying a certain thing. He's, he's trying to bind HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as it were. He's trying to bind Hashem, force Hashem's hand in a certain sense. Yiftach also did this. He made a vow, and the purpose of the vow, again, is to bring about a certain positive result. You, uh, you know, King Saul wants a victory over Goliath. Uh, uh, what was it? Kalev wanted a victory over this particular city. Eliezer wanted victory, so to speak, to come and bring home the right girl for, for Yitzchak Avinu. So Yiftach also made a promise. He said to Hashem, let's see, Yiftach midal say He said, if Hashem, you give me, you give me success in my military campaign, the first thing that comes out of the door of my house, I will bring as a korban, as a sacrifice to God. Amar Kodesh Baruch Hu, Ilu Yatsa Gamalei Chamor Oy Kelev Hayusam Aleu Oyla Hashem says it's not such a good idea because if a camel comes out, a donkey, a dog, you're going to bring it as a korban. You can't bring it as a korban, right? So it's not such a good idea to make such a request, make such a uh, make such a commitment. So Hashem gave him a bad result. The bad result was that his daughter came out. His daughter was the first one that came out. So, if you look at the Pesukim, what happened was that because she had been sanctified to the Temple, so she had to go off and be alone, and she never got married for the rest of her life. It's a very sad story. Yiftach was a great hero, helped the Jewish people, but his daughter ended up basically incarcerated for life. Okay, when he sees her, he, cr- he rips his garments. It's a terrible thing. Now, the, the, the measure says something very interesting. So, Yiftach could have undone. It's possible to, to nullify a nether, to nullify a vow. You go to a sage, you say to the sage, if I would have known that this would be the result, I wouldn't have made the nether, I wouldn't have made the vow. And the sage has the ability to annul the vow retroactively. But in order to do so, he would have had to go to Pinchas. Pinchas HaKoyin was the person who was able to nullify vows. Pinchas Amarani Koyin Gadol. 
בין כהן גודל, אלה כי צורם הארץ הזה. I'm sorry, I skipped. אמר אני מלך ואלה כי צור פנחס, each of them said, פנחס said, יפתח said, I'm not going to go to פנחס, because I'm a king, I'm the, you know, I'm the hero. פנחס said, look, I'm, I'm a coin, I'm the son of a, of a coin, great grandson, a grandson of Aaron, a coin. I'm going to go to יפתח, this person who, although he was a hero, and he was a leader, but he wasn't a Torah scholar. In the meantime, because neither of them was willing to go to the other one, which is very sad, so this poor girl ended up not getting married, and the result was she lost her life, and it was their fault. Pinchas and Stalkam Yemen Rucha Kaidish. As a result of this, Pinchas lost his Rucha Kaidish. He lost his divine inspiration. Although the Chsuv Pinchas ben Alazar, Nogid Hoya Lem Lefonim Hashemimoy. Pinchas ben Alazar had had Siyat Adishmai, he had special help from heaven before this, before this case. But as a result of this, of this unwillingness to go to Yiftach, so he lost his divine inspiration. Which, by the way, divine inspiration in Rucha Kaidish doesn't have to only be. Um, knowing things, it can also be divine help. Like we find King David, he was Ochazei Ruach, he had a divine inspiration, he was able to overcome Goliath through that. So Pinchas lost that divine inspiration at Siyat HaDishmaya. Yiftach Nishal Ever Ever Venikbar. The result for Yiftach, what was his punishment? That in the end, he was he was torn limb from limb and he was buried each of the parts of his body were buried in different places the Pasuk says he was buried in the cities of Gilad it doesn't say the city of Gilad rather it says in the cities of Gilad because this teaches us that how did he die? he died in a very grotesque way he was ripped limb from limb and each of his limbs were buried in different locations. So we see what happens when a person, first of all, makes a vow, makes a, tries to bind Hashem in the wrong way, we have to be careful with these things, that's what it's saying. And number two, we see the importance of, of humility, of anivus. Because if a person is not humble, he says, oh, let him come to me. And the other one says, no, let him come to me. And the result is a great tragedy for this girl and also for these two great men. Rabbi Shimon ben Levi Rabbi Yechanan. We have, it's probably supposed to be Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. I'm guessing. Rich Lakish, Amar Domim Hayachayev Lita, Emily Karev, Al Gabi Mizbech, Rabbi Yechanan. Yeah, it's gotta be. We have a Machlegis, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, Rish Lakish, and Rabbi Yechanan. Rish Lakish says, that what he should have done is he should have given money and he should have brought that money. He should have taken the value of the girl, like we find by the, the idea of Erchin. He should have taken the value of the girl and he should have taken that money, been paid to her, so to speak, redeemed her from, from the Kedusha that was on her, from having made this vow. And he could have brought a Korban with that money. Rabbi Yechanan Amar, Dom Lo Yechayev. Rabbi Yechanan says, No. She wasn't obligated, he wasn't obligated to bring any money. The Tanein and Dover Hashem Reli Karav Al-Gabim Zbech Yikariv. The Hashem Reli Karav Al-Gabim Zbech Yikariv Al-Gabim Zbech. There was nothing there. The truth was that the vow that he made was not a valid vow. You can't say that a girl is going to be, an oil is going to be a sacrifice. That's not possible. So if a person says something that's not possible, there's no chalois. It doesn't take effect. Vilayoid. Ends off the Medrash. This is the end of Sefer Says the Medrash, an amazing thing. We have this whole discussion here about these cases, these four different cases of people who they wanted a certain result and they made a certain kind of vow. And there was a problem with their vow. Their vow was in the way that they phrased it and they opened themselves to a possibility which, which was not a good possibility. So, different results. But if a person makes a proper vow, Right, a person wants to let's say make a deal, make a deal with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. There is such a thing. I would recommend discussing it with your local Orthodox rabbi before making such a deal. But there is such a thing. You want a certain result. You want a certain success. You want a certain. I want to, whatever it is. 
You can say, look, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I want, I want that I should have Parnasa. I'm willing, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to do something for you, so to speak. I'm going to learn a daf a day. I'm going to commit to a certain, perhaps, challenging commitment. Let's make a deal. So it has to be an appropriate kind of deal. And again, don't, uh, don't do this without the help of uh, the right person, the right Rav. But there is such a thing, and we see that whoever makes a neder, makes some kind of deal with Hashem, and he fulfills his neder, he fulfills his, his deal. So a person merits that he should be able to pay off his neder in Jerusalem. The vows to Hashem that I made, King David says, I will pay off. Says the continuation of the verse, which we say in, in Hallel, in the courtyards of the house of Hashem, in, in the midst of Jerusalem, Hallelujah. Okay, so a person, very interesting, when a person makes such a commitment to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I'm going to do a certain thing, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, please reciprocate. When a person makes that kind of commitment, the result is that he's in Yerushalayim. He's in Yerushalayim, he's in Jerusalem. We need to know what this means. The Omer and, and the Medrash ends off with something which is also a little cryptic. The Pesach says also at the end of Hallel, in those Pesukim, not far after this, thank God for He is good, for His kindness is forever. And what I'd like to take out of this Medrash, the main thing I would like to take out of the Medrash is not so much what we've been speaking about as far as the Nidorim, as far as making deals with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but what I, what I want to show is you have all these stories where HaKadosh Baruch Hu is responding in a certain sense, right? It's not literal. It doesn't mean Hashem responded to the person and said, that's not such a good idea. That, there was no conversation, really. But the, the Medrash is putting it this way to understand, for us to understand that there is a conversation. That there is a conversation. Eliezer, Ebed Avram, has a conversation with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He asks for Siyat HaDashman. He asks for divine help. And he makes a commitment. Each of these people, Kalev, makes a commitment. He says, whoever's going to overcome this city. Shaul makes a commitment. He says, whoever's going to overcome this city. And it's amazing that I have a right, in a certain sense, to make a commitment to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and expect HaKadosh Baruch Hu to reciprocate. And I'll, I'd like to illustrate this actually from something that happened to me in my life. And uh, and it's very powerful. It's a very interesting thing. You know, a person, an adult, has to be responsible for his family. A person has a lot of expenses, parnasa. You know, but it's easy to get lost and, and to go into chayvis, to go into debts. And at a certain point, Baruch Hashem, many years ago, it came clear to me that I need to get my act together. I need to be on top of things. I need to be committed to things. But I didn't know how to commit. I didn't know how to say, okay, I'm going to be on top of things. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu helped me and showed me. This is another aspect of it. Looking for the signs. If you see a certain thing over and over again, it's a sign that, that this is where you're supposed to head. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you to head. It became clear to me that I'm, I need to com- make this commitment. But how can I make a commitment? You know, my parnasa Baruch Hashem, is music. And how can I commit? Hare, I don't know. I don't know where the, the money's going to come from. But this is an amazing thing. I did make a commitment. I jumped into the waters of commitment when it came to my finances with the help of financial advisors. And what I saw was that the moment that I made a commitment, I started getting more siyata deshmaya. So my question always was, well, I can commit, but how? And I can't make Hashem commit, right? Maybe Hashem is not interested in helping me, chas v'shalom. But what I saw is that Hashem is there waiting for us to commit, waiting there for us to commit. So when it comes to figuring out, hey, where does Hashem want me to go? So we have this simon, we have the signs along the way, and we also have, and we also have this amazing idea of commitment and using commitments to Kivyachol, we can involve Hashem in our commitment. We can say, Hashem, I'm going to be committed to this thing. I want you to be committed as well. I heard recently another story of this, of this type where a certain person 
a young lady, not yet married, is deciding, debating which way to go in their, in their, uh, in their career choices, career paths, and they were guided to to say, "Look, Hashem, I want to do this. I want to do the harder path so that I can be part of somebody else's ability to learn Torah." But in order to do that, I need you to bring bring the guy. I need the sh- I need the shidduch. And I don't the story didn't end yet, but there's such a thing. Okay, so that's point number one, and that's at the end of the part of the I'd like to touch for a few minutes. We don't have too much time left. Touch for a few minutes something in Parshas Bamidbar as well, which I believe is also part of a way of thinking about approaching how do we know where Hashem wants us to go, or how do we know Hashem is going to be there for us. Pasik says, God spoke to Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai. Devar Hashem Hamidbar, Pasik in Jeremiah and in Yirmiyah. Do you see, Hashem says, do you see my hand? Do you see how in the Midbar the Jewish people walked in the wilderness and I was walking with them? Kodesh Baruch Hu says to the Jewish people, what's this idea of the Midbar? What does it mean going in the Midbar, walking in the wilderness, right? Sometimes we feel like, where is Hashem? Is, is He with me? Is Hashem with me? The Jewish people complained, Why did you bring us out of Egypt in order that we should die in the wilderness? And that's it's a pasik at the end. It's a few prakam later in Bamidbar. Right? We're not talking about, I'm not sure where we are in the, oh no, excuse me. I'm not sure where we are in the story here. But the Jewish people, They've been walking in the midbar, and they say, "Why did you take us out to die in the, in the wilderness?" V'chi kam midbar yisi liYisrael, v'chi kam midbar sisi imahem. Kishvachu says, "Are you really in the wilderness? Have I been a wilderness to you?" B'noyik shabayil lemelch basav adam sheyatzal midbar shema moitzi hu sham shalva kishem shalayim moitzi bepalotin oy achil aishtiya. A king goes out into the wilderness. There's no palaces there. There's no food. There's no drinks there. Now, I took you out of Egypt into the, quote, wilderness. I brought you out there. I gave you a challenge. It doesn't mean a challenge, actually, the word. Uh, it means that I caused you to lie on beds like a king lies on a bed right when they eat they dine on a couch of some of some sort and i gave you these three awesome leaders moses aaron and miriam in this in the merit of moshe so you had the, the miraculous manna falling the the forefathers didn't see such a thing I gave you the man, you didn't know about this, something never never happened before. Your forefathers didn't have this. In the merit of Aaron, the second leader, I surrounded you with the clouds of glory. Pasuk says, God spread out as a protection the clouds. Okay, I'm not going to get into that. And of course, in the schus of Miriam, the merit of Miriam, the Jewish people had the, the amazing well, the miraculous well, which continued to provide water for them. So the Jewish people, they present a challenge to Kodesh Baruch Why did you bring us out to, to die in the Midbar? And Kodesh Baruch responds and says, What Midbar? What Midbar? You're looking at things in a very shallow way if you see a Midbar. Because I gave you everything you need. I gave you physical protection. I gave you all the food you need. I gave you all the drink you need. You had everything. There was no midbar there. I didn't really bring you out to a midbar. I didn't come. I didn't bring you out there to cause you any pain. I brought you out there to protect you, to treat you like a king, to bring you to the palace in the midbar. This point, and this is the, the last point that I want to say when it comes to thinking about where does Hashem, where does Hashem 
want us to go and what does Hashem want from us I believe that we can take out of this measure something incredible and that is that we have the ability to complain about things and say well I don't really know where Hashem wants me to go I don't really know what, you know it doesn't things don't look very good on and on but this is not this is a measure that's not just talking about talking to the people from 3,300 years ago this is a measure talking to us and the measure is saying to us that we are have to look carefully at our situations. We need to notice, hey, we're not in a wilderness. We think to ourselves, oh, I don't know where to go. I don't see where to go. I don't have that direction. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu puts the direction in front of us. Those are the three leaders. The, the Moshe and the Aaron and the Miriam. And the, and the merit of each of them, we have everything that we need. Look, I have a roof over my head. I have food in my refrigerator. I have drink. I have running water. I have electricity in my house. I have everything I need. And this is a powerful thing to think about when it comes to where is HaKadosh Baruch Hu leading me? I need to look at the past and I need to see, look, first of all, Hashem provides for me everything that I need. That's first of all. But that's not just true. Right? It's an amazing connection between the, the, the leaders themselves and the merits that as a result of those leaders, the, that which was provided for us, it symbolizes, the Medrash is teaching us, it symbolizes the fact that when we look at the basic necessities that we have, we know that Hashem is leading us. We know that Hashem is giving us everything that we need. And part of that is, where are we going to go? And again, that might look like discussing something with a Rav. It might look like, you know, getting Aitzis, getting advice from others. But what I want to bring out from here is that it's already there. It's in front of us. We have to notice it. We may not always know exactly, but it's there. It's in front of us. And we need to open our eyes. That's what this Medrash is saying. We need to open our eyes. It's not a midbar. It's not a wilderness. We have everything that we need. So I want to bless you. I ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us. That, first of all, we should be able to see the stuff that's in front of us, as we said. We should be able to see the, the incredible bounty that Hashem has for us and the leaders that are in front of us. There to help us and guide us. And Hashem should help us to be able to, to make those commitments and know. Hashem should help us to realize and recognize, be careful with it, get guidance on it, of course, but that when we make a real commitment, Hashem, who is the ultimate one, Emes Devara, His word is true, His commitments are real, the most real of anything. Hashem, when, when we make commitments, Kodesh Baruch Hu stands right there by our side and joins us and helps us and gives us Yat Deshmai. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.